For example, let's say you have a portrait photo that you want to convert to landscape, but obviously you're going to need to fill in all of that excess space around the sides. Well, luckily in Photoshop, there are two incredibly easy tools that do just that, and I'm going to cover exactly what they are in this tutorial. Hello friends, my name is Brendan from BeWillCreative.com and like I just mentioned, I want to share two incredibly easy ways of extending backgrounds in Photoshop. This works really well for converting portrait images into landscape or just extending some parts of your photo a little bit more to help your framing. These two techniques are almost automatic and they work by using content aware. So let's hop into Photoshop and see exactly how they work. So the first photo that we'll work with is this studio image taken in a portrait orientation, but let's say we want to turn it into a landscape, meaning a horizontal orientation. Well, obviously the first thing we need to do is extend the sides of our photo. Now to do that, all we'd have to do is access the crop tool by pressing C, or you could access it here in the toolbar. And then we can just click and drag out to extend the background of our photo like so, and turn our image into a landscape orientation. So looking at that, I'm pretty happy with how that looks. So let's click on the checkbox to commit to our changes. Now we've extended the background, but obviously we have all of this transparent area. So how can we fill all that in? That's where content to where cropping comes into play. So let's take things back a little bit and start the cropping process again. This time, once we access our crop tool, we're gonna go up to the toolbar and check off the content aware option. So checking that off, We'll then once again click on our image to crop it, extend the crop area, and then we'll do the exact same thing as before, dragging out on one side and then dragging out on the other. Once you're happy with the positioning of your crop, just click on the checkbox to commit to those changes. Now look what happens. Photoshop will automatically take all of those transparent areas and fill it with other similar things to extend off of the background of your original photo. So now we've quickly turned our portrait image into a landscape orientation pretty much automatically. The only manual effort we had to do was click on the content aware button. Now that you know this method of extending the background, let's go and talk about another easy example using a different method. With this photo here, let's say once again, I want to extend the sides of the image to make it into a landscape orientation. This time, what I'm going to do is uncheck the content aware fill option, and I'm going to drag out to create the new size for my photo. In this case, I just want to extend it something like this looks good to me. I'll click on the checkbox to commit to those changes. This time, since we didn't have the content aware fill option checked off, we obviously have all of this transparent area that we need to fill in. Well, this is where content aware scaling comes into play, and this is another great way of extending the backgrounds in Photoshop. To access this tool, just make sure your layer is selected, and then go up to edit and down here to content aware scale. Clicking on that, a transform box will come up around your image a lot like the move tool. And then just click on one of these anchor points right here. Hold the shift key so that it extends horizontally. And then I can click and drag out and look what happens. It starts to extend the background, but it leaves my subject totally untouched. Now at a certain point along the way, depending on your image, your subject will start to stretch as well. So look what happens here. Notice how right here, her arms start to extend right there. So that's what we don't want to happen. So once you see your subject getting distorted, make sure to avoid that. So this is where it started. And then once you're happy with that, press a enter key. Now we just need to go through the process again and continue to stretch this out until everything is filled in. So once again, going to edit down here to content to our scale. And then this time we can work on stretching that image even further without distorting our subject at all. So continuing going on until we see any changes in our subject. In this case, I don't see anything. So we can just keep going out all the way to the other side. So now we have one side of our image totally extended. Now let's go and do it one more time to extend the other side of our photo. Going to edit, content to our scale, holding the shift key, clicking and dragging out all the way to the other side of our photo. Clicking the checkbox to commit to that. We have now successfully stretched out our background and extended our image from a portrait orientation into a landscape. Now that you understand how to use both of these two methods individually, let's see how they could work together to extend the background of a photo. In this image right here, we have some patterns going on that make things a little bit more complicated. As you can see, we have lines that extend out from the background behind our subject. So content to wear fill often doesn't do a good job 
of dealing with this. To highlight exactly what I mean, let me show you. If I go and grab my crop tool by pressing C, check off the content to wear option, and then go and drag this out. Let's say I want to extend the background just like I was before. I'll drag that out like so. Now when I click on the checkbox, Photoshop will try to fill in all of that area, but now there's gonna be a problem. Now, although Photoshop did automatically fill everything in for us, there's a bunch of stuff that doesn't look very good. These lines don't make any sense. These two vertical lines are far too close together and it just didn't really get the effect that we were going for. So that means we can use the content to wear scaling from the surfer photo and then the content to wear fill method that we just use here together to fix this issue. So let's step back a bit to our starting photo. This time, I'm going to first extend my image without the content aware option checked off. So unchecking content aware, clicking on my image and extending the background like so to the new dimensions that I'm looking for. Clicking the checkbox to commit to that. Now let's go and access the content aware scaling, going up to edit, down here to content aware scale, and then just holding the shift key and clicking and dragging out to extend this background. Now we're going to continue to do this until our subject starts to get distorted. So right around here, you can start to see how her shoe begins to extend and get distorted. So we don't want that. So I'll bring that back to here, press the enter key, and then we're going to go through that step one more time. Going up to edit down here to content to wear scale. And then once again, clicking and dragging out until our photo starts to get distorted once again. So the problem that we're having here is our subject continues to get moved over, but I want my subject to stay exactly where she is on that left hand third of the frame. And I also keep having issues with her foot being distorted. So let's just undo that. And now we can use a marquee selection to show Photoshop exactly what we want to extend. And so we don't affect our subject at all. Grabbing our rectangular marquee tool, I'm gonna to create a selection around just the edge of the photo that I want to extend. In this case, right around here, making sure I'm not selecting any of my subject. Now with that selection created, I'll go up to edit and down here to content to our scale. And now look how when I go to scale this photo, it only is going to scale that one part of the frame. It's not going to scale any of the other parts of the image like it was before. It's only going to affect that selection area. So now we have an image that we've extended the background on one side of our photo a decent amount. But the problem that we're having is the ground and is starting to become distorted. So if I continued to stretch that out, it would just get worse and worse. So we can now go and use the content to wear fill option to fill in the rest of our photo since it's not as big of a gap anymore. So Photoshop will have a bit of an easier time. So I'm gonna first go and recrop my photo back to its initial state, just around all of the visible pixels. Clicking the checkbox to commit to that. I'll then go back and crop my photo back to where I want the framing to be. Something like this. Now, with content to where checked off, I'll click on the checkbox and it's going to extend the photo and fill in that area off of the content to where scaling that we did before. Now, this time, look how much better our wall looks. There's way less problems going on, and the only issue we have is this one extra line here on the ground. So, we can quickly clean that up just by clicking on our spot healing brush tool. And then I just click and paint over that one line like so, and Photoshop will quickly get rid of that spot for me. And now I have successfully extended the background of this photo using both of the methods that we learned in this tutorial. So extending backgrounds in Photoshop is really as easy as that, and Content Aware makes it so much more simple rather than having to go and do a bunch of manual clone stamp adjustments or something like that. Now, if you enjoyed today's tutorial and you're gonna try these techniques in your own photos, then make sure to hit that like button down below, and also consider subscribing to stay up to date with more photo editing tutorials just like today. Again, my name is Brendan from BeWellCreative.com, and I'll catch you back here next time for another new tutorial. See you then.